How are you? Good, how are you? Thank you for joining us today. My name is Bo Cofield. I'm the uh, Vice President and Chief Clinical Operations Officer for UK Healthcare. Um, uh, and uh, we're here today to talk about the, uh, the Zika virus. And whenever someone in our community needs the most advanced subspecialty patient care, they typically uh, rely on the University of Kentucky, and that's what we're here for. We're very fortunate that uh, a part of the expertise of our clinical staff um, uh, is the knowledge and capability to prepare for any disease or condition, uh, Zika virus uh, being included. Um, uh, whether it be that or tuberculosis or other things previously considered a threat or emerging threats, just like the Zika virus or Ebola, we stand ready to help educate uh, the citizens of the Commonwealth and, uh, and serve our patients going forward. Along those lines, we're fortunate to have uh, three folks with us today uh, uh, who can share their thoughts on the Zika virus. Uh, Dr. Derek Forster, who's the Medical Director uh, for uh, Infection Prevention and Control. Kimberly Blanton, who's our uh, Enterprise Director for Infection uh, infectious disease and prevention uh, and patient safety, and Dr. Sean McTeague, who's the medical director of pediatric infection control here at, uh, here at UK Healthcare. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Forrester and uh, Kim and Sean will be uh, glad to share some information with you here at the out front, uh, at the outset, and we'll be glad to answer any questions that you might have uh, following that. Dr. Forrester. Okay. Well, as, uh, as Bo mentioned, um, you know, I'm, I'm Derek Forrester. I'm, I'm one of the infectious disease doctors here and the medical director for infection prevention and control. I think it's, we'll just start by kind of giving an overview of Zika virus and then I, I think open up for questions. I think we all have a little bit of different expertise um, in this. Uh, but Zika virus is a mosquito-borne virus primarily transmitted by a mosquito called the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Uh, there's a few other uh, species of mosquitoes that could be um, able to transmit this as well. Um, infection with this virus is typically asymptomatic, so 80% of patients who get infected never have symptoms. Uh, the 20% that do have symptoms are generally very mild and be characterized like many other viral infections such as fever, rash, uh, some joint pains, etc. Um, this virus has been around since 1947, is when it was first discovered and reported, uh, and, but in 2015 was the first case reported in the Americas when an outbreak uh, was reported in Brazil. Uh, this, the, the big concern with this virus uh, that, uh, that arose from this outbreak in Brazil is its association uh, with congenital microcephaly, which is a, uh, a, a congenitally acquired birth defect that can lead to serious complications in the fetus and the child that are, that are born to women uh, who are infected with Zika virus. Uh, this association is still being evaluated. There's still a lot that's not exactly known about this association and what else may be uh, occurring that is allowing this to happen or is causing this to happen. Uh, but regardless, it was this association that uh, on February 1st um, made the World Health Organization declare Zika virus to be a, uh, quote, public health uh, emergency of international concern. Uh, since this virus first reported in Brazil, uh, there's been subsequent cases in many other countries in Central and South America and now the Caribbean. This all uh, kind of signals a geographic spread of the area where transmission is occurring, uh, and this is kind of what's prompting a lot of the concern uh, from, from the people in, that, in those areas and people who are traveling to those areas. Human-to-human -human transmission is thought to be very rare, uh, with the exception of, uh, excuse me, including uh, sexual transmission. Uh, which has been reported uh, within, these, within these outbreaks and has also been reported uh, here in the United States in Dallas, Texas. Um, I think it's important to note that, that our role at UK Healthcare and our role as healthcare providers is different with this emerging pathogen than it is with, with um, things like Ebola and influenza because this virus is not spread from person to person in the same manner that those viruses are. Uh, and because of that, the care that is, uh, the manner in which care is delivered and is received by patients doesn't change from that of a typical patient. So much different than what our plans are for Ebola and some other emerging pathogens. I think that's an that's a important distinction to make with this virus. Um, you know, there are uh, now uh, recommendations for pregnant women regarding travel from the Centers for Disease Control because of the concern for, mi for microcephalus. 
uh, with Zika virus infection. The current CDC recommendations are that uh, for pregnant women uh, not to travel to areas where Zika virus uh, is, is transmission is active. Uh, if, you, if travel is unavoidable, um, those uh, patients should contact and talk with their health care providers uh, and discuss mosquito bite prevention measures and strictly adhere to those things. Um, certainly there is, there is more guidance regarding this on a CDC's website as well. Um, uh, there's currently no vaccine or medication for Zika virus. Um, there are uh, some now specific recommendations for testing as well. Uh, so the CDC currently recommends testing performed for any pregnant woman uh, who develops symptoms that are consistent with Zika virus if their travel is within two weeks to an area where Zika virus is occurring. Uh, and that's a, uh, that's a uh, recommendation that, that they made uh, within the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, there's other things here to talk about, but uh, I think probably best now to kind of stop and ask what questions you guys have uh, and how we can uh, help. Does anyone have any questions of Dr. Forster or Ms. Teague or Ms. Lent? Do you have any cases here in Kentucky, or are you concerned that we will see cases here? I'm not aware of any <laughs> specific cases in Kentucky. Certainly we haven't had any uh, through, uh, through our knowledge that we've been involved with. Um, you know, obviously, we, this is a global society. We live in a world where people travel. Uh, sometimes they travel, uh, and it's unavoidable. Uh, so is it possible to see pa patients infected with this virus in Kentucky? Yeah, I think that's, that's certainly a possibility, and I wouldn't be surprised if that would eventually happen. It's important, though, to say that those would be likely to be imported cases where they would be travelers who became infected in one of the areas where Zika virus is being transmitted and then came back either with their symptoms or developed them after coming here. Um, it's not really a concern right now that people are going to be becoming infected in Kentucky. Well, I'll say that, um, you know, the, the mosquito vector that is uh, linked to this disease is present in the United States. It's mostly in the southern part of the United States, the Aedes aegypti mosquito that I mentioned. Um, it, you know, it can occasionally probably be in Kentucky, but it's not something that we routinely see in this state. Um, there is another mosquito vector that's very similar that uh, can also carry the disease that is and can be seen in Kentucky. Um, but just what Sean was saying, the, the epidemiology of these type of infections, what we call arboviral infections, or, or infections that are not transmitted from person to person, but are transmitted from a vector like an insect or mosquito, in this case a mosquito, uh, in order to start getting uh, native disease, meaning uh, illness uh, in people that don't travel, you have to get uh, a, a large number of your vector population, in this case, again, mosquitoes in that area be infected before you can start to see that happen. That's something that typically takes time um, to happen, um, but that's something that we're seeing occurring at least in the central and southern parts, sorry, in the cent central and South America and in the Caribbean. What do you say to families or students who are preparing for spring breaks in Florida or the Caribbean? Yeah, I think they just need to be aware of what's going on and keep up to date with the newest recommendations. Uh, specifically, again, the the really concern, the real concern here is with with pregnant women and the potential for for, for microcephaly. And I think those uh, certainly for women who are pregnant or who wish to become pregnant, they really need to be vigilant about this and follow up with the current recommendations. And and right now, again, like I said, that would that would imply that that they uh, postpone their travel. Yeah, I think that's something that's still getting worked out. And even this association, right now it's still an association. It's not a direct cause and effect relationship. So they do hope to have some of that information uh, as they kind of continue to investigate uh, this current outbreak in Brazil. But that's one of the unanswered questions right now is exactly what is the risk uh, in somebody who is pregnant and infected? I don't think we have that number yet. It's probably also a number that would be difficult to, uh, difficult to ascertain given that 80% of the people who are infected are going to be asymptomatic. So even knowing exactly how many people are, are, you know, are currently infected to then be able to figure out things like what percentage of, uh, you know, of children are going to end up being affected, it's probably going to be very, very difficult.
somebody who might be uh, maybe going to be protected for three or four years from now, still a concern? Well, I, like I said, I think there's still a lot that we don't ex exactly know and that there's still some unanswered questions. As the, the CDC currently states that um, that sexual tra I'm sorry, uh, that uh, transmission to the fetus is unlikely to ever occur uh, after they resolve their infection. Um, you know, that's a statement from them, but it's still, I think, to some degree, an unanswered question as far as when the risk becomes zero. At what, how far after infection does that risk actually become zero? Yeah. As far as resolving infection, that's typically been about a week is how long that they've seen the virus lasting within the, uh, within the bloodstream. It's a softball here. <laughs> so we still, uh, we really want uh, people to understand that we're still in flu season. We s we have seen an uptick in Kentucky in our influenza-like symptoms um, from their visits in our emergency department. And so, if you have not gotten your flu shot, it's still the time to do that um, because I feel that we haven't seen that peak yet, and we're going to continue to to see flu um, as we have in the uh, previous years over the next few months. So definitely want to get a flu shot. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of tag on to that as well. At least this year, and the, um, the circulating flu strains and the flu vaccine appear to be a very good match. Uh, mm -hmm. So unlike years past, like last year, for example, uh, this flu vaccine appears to be a good match and should be as effective as any uh, in the past. So. Do you, do you have any from thoughts? our numbers uh, here at UK, John. I've not seen that. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's something that we saw in, in, in previous years when, um, when uh, the H1N1 flu first started to, uh, to become prevalent during that, that, you know, that outbreak. Um, it kind of disproportionately affected kind of the young, healthy population as opposed to uh, you know, the, the, the infants and, and the elderly. But I don't know that we've necessarily mm -hmm. seen that specifically this, uh, this flu season. What we have seen is a, is a report that even though um, you know, our, our total numbers of influenza in, in Kentucky are less than they've been in, in, in previous years at this point, that we have had some very severe cases, so some, uh, you know, some cases where people have become very, uh, very severely ill.